The gaming industry is constantly evolving and expanding with new ideas. Few of these ideas become popular and even fewer go on to create entire genres around them. Today we are going to be taking a deep dive into the backstory behind the man who single-handedly sparked the battle royale genre, and how the same man would go on to create the fifth most sold game ever. This is PUBG's backstory. Our story starts in 2013 with an Irish man named Brendan Green, who is better known online as Player Unknown. During this time, he was living in Brazil, working as a photographer and graphic designer. He would occasionally spend his time off playing video games. However, he was unimpressed with gaming at the time and felt that many of the FPS games available were repetitive and boring. Because of this, Green would start to move away from gaming. That is, until he discovered the DayZ mod for Arma 2. In case you don't know, the DayZ mod is an extremely popular zombie mod made for Arma. It gained significant popularity due to its realistic survival elements which require players to scavenge for supplies, fight off zombies, and avoid other players who could be hostile. The mod quickly became one of the most popular mods in the gaming community, and would later have a standalone game based on it. DayZ's backstory is also my most popular video. The mod caught Green's attention with its realistic military and survival simulation, and its open-ended gameplay. Green was hooked, and decided that he wanted to create his own mods for the community of Arma 2. He went on to make a custom server, learning programming as he went along. After some time of working on his newfound craft, he would release a mod heavily inspired by an event held by YouTubers and streamers called the Survivor Games. This event took inspiration from the Hunger Games series and pinned players against one another in DayZ until only a few were left. However, there was a huge problem with the Survivor Games. It wasn't regularly open to the public. Green set out to fix that, and DayZ Battle Royale was born. Although, it wouldn't last very long. DayZ released into a standalone version and Arma 3 was released. Because of this, over time, Green's mod would lose players. He transferred his idea over to Arma 3 and added many new features, some of which are still in PUBG today. He decided to move away from the Hunger Games style of gameplay, and removed players all spawning at one location. He did this to allow players to have a better chance of survival at the beginning, and also to avoid any copyright infringement on the Hunger Games novels. His new version was inspired by a movie titled Battle Royale. Battle Royale is a Japanese movie set in a dystopian future where a class of high school students is forced to participate in a government-run program called the Battle Royale, where they are sent to an isolated island and forced to fight to the death until only one survivor remains, which may sound very similar to the concept of PUBG. After spending some time working on his new mod, Green released Player Unknown's Battle Royale for Arma 3, and things took off from there. After gaining a rather large audience for his new mod, he was reached out to by Sony Online Entertainment, now known as Daybreak Game Company. They were interested in licensing the Battle Royale game mode from Green and hiring him on as a consultant for their game H1Z1. After some time, H1Z1 was split into two separate games. First, H1Z1 Just Survive, which was a zombie survival game, and the second, H1Z1 King of the Kill, which would become the first ever standalone Battle Royale game released. Separately, in South Korea, a game studio by the name Gino Games was acquired by Blue Hole Studio. After the acquisition was complete, Gino Games was rebranded to Blue Hole Gino Games. The company was led by Chain Han Kim. After developing MMORPGs for almost 16 years, Kim saw the acquisition as an opportunity to expand his horizons and create something new. He found that most teams were using cloud-based servers and digital distribution platforms like Google Play in the App Store, and it was a wake-up call for him. He had focused most of his work on the Korean audience and not worldwide. After playing DayZ, Kim knew that he wanted to make a session-based survival game. He stated that he wanted to make a game like this for a long time, but never got the chance because it wasn't popular in Korea. Luckily, with Google Play and App Store and other services like that, he would have the chance because he could make it worldwide. He knew that if done right, he could influence a Korean audience. So he got to researching. This is when he discovered Green's work, and he was impressed and contacted him hoping to hear back. After the H1Z1 split, Green's contract ended with Sony, and Green was left without a job when he received the message from Kim. Although skeptical, Green was open to the idea, and within a week, Green flew out to Blue Hole's headquarters in Korea to discuss the options. A few weeks later, he became the creative director of Blue Hole, and Green promptly moved to South Korea to oversee development. According to Green, this was the first time a Korean game studio had brought aboard a foreigner for a creative director role. While a risk, he says that the relationship with Blue Hole's management was strong, allowing Green's team to work autonomously with minimal oversight. Development for their new game began in 2016 and was publicly announced in June of the same year. Bluehole started with a team of about 35 developers supporting Green's work, but had expanded to 70 in just a year. Green stated that many of the developers were voluntarily putting longer hours into the game's development due to their dedication to the project and not by any mandate from himself or Bluehole's management. 
PUBG would go on to host many alpha and beta tests to ensure that they were capturing what gamers really wanted. And on March 23rd of 2017, PUBG was launched on Steam Early Access. Sales exploded. The game made over 11 million in just the first three days. And by the second week of April, it sold over 1 million copies. Within just three short months, over 5 million copies were sold, and Bluehole announced revenue had exceeded $100 million. The rest of 2017 would be a very busy year for Green and his team. First, Green announced at E3 2017 that PUBG would be coming to Xbox One as a timed console exclusive. Initially, Green said that Microsoft was not directly involved with the porting, but would only be providing assistance to make sure that the port was good, and that most of the porting responsibilities were being held by a company called Andesito, a Spanish developer. However, at Gamescom that year, Bluehole affirmed that Microsoft Studios was going to be publishing the Xbox One version of the title, and helping to make a planned 2017 release of this version. Green said that Microsoft's support has helped in several ways, not only for the Xbox One version, but improving the performance and security of the Windows version as well. Further, by being part of the group of studios under the Microsoft banner, they have the ability to talk and incorporate technologies from other developers, such as improved water rendering techniques they obtained from Rare that they had developed for Sea of Thieves. Microsoft stated that they considered PUBG to be an important project to demonstrate their company's ability to be more than just a publisher. According to Microsoft's Nico Bahari, who led the project, Bahari said that they had given PUBG a white glove treatment, and for the Xbox One port, they had provided services from their advanced technology group and time and support from the Coalition, another of Microsoft Studios' subsidiaries. Kim also stated that the team was interested in cross-platform play between Windows and Xbox, although they did not anticipate this as a release feature, as they needed to determine how to mitigate the advantage keyboard and mouse using players would have over those using controllers. Later, in September of 2017, Bluehole felt with the rapid growth of interest in the game, PUBG should have its own studio. Bluehole took the previously mentioned Gino Games and rebranded it as PUBG Corporation, with Kim as its CEO. PUBG Corporation continued the development of the game and its marketing and growth as well. They also went on to open an office in the United States, with plans to open one in Europe and Japan as well. With the game's success and early access, Tencent Games, the largest publisher of video games in China, approached Bluehole with an offer to publish PUBG in China. However, the Chinese Audio, Video, and Digital Publishing Association issued a statement in October of 2017 that discouraged Battle Royale style games, stating that they are too violent and deviate from Chinese values of socialism, deeming it harmful to young consumers. The following month, PUBG had reached a formal agreement with the Chinese government to allow the game to release in the country, with Tencent as the publishing partner. However, some changes were made to make sure that it aligned with socialist values and traditional Chinese morals. And finally, titled Game Preview Edition, the early access version for Xbox One was released on December 12th, 2017, in both digital and physical formats. To promote it, Microsoft performed real-life supply drops in Australia in the week prior to release, with crates containing Xbox hardware, Battlegrounds merchandise, and other goods. They got the attention of the public using passcodes published alongside the drop locations on social media. And just nine days later, PUBG left Steam Early Access and officially launched on Steam. In the beginning of 2018, Tencent Games and PUBG Corporation announced that they were planning on releasing two mobile versions based on the game. The first, PUBG Exhilarating Battlefield, was an abridged version of the original game and was developed by Lightspeed and Quantum Studio, an internal division of Tencent Games. The second, PUBG Army Attack includes more arcade-style elements including action taking place on warships, and that was developed by Tencent's Timmy Studio. Both versions were free to play, and would be released for Android and iOS devices in China on February 9, 2018. The games had a combined total of 75 million pre-registrations, and ranked first and second on the Chinese iOS download charts at launch. With the success of their first mobile versions of the game, PUBG felt that they can continue to release worldwide, starting with a soft launch in China of an English version of Exhilarating Battlefield, simply named PUBG Mobile. PUBG Mobile would be released worldwide on March 19, 2018. PUBG created a Korean and Japanese-oriented version of the game, which was released in June titled PUBG Mobile KR, and a Vietnamese version which was released in January of 2019 titled PUBG Mobile VN. PUBG Corporation and Tencent wanted to release PUBG Mobile as an additional game in China, although they had been waiting for approval by the Chinese government. During this time, the game could only be offered as a public test. However, PUBG Mobile's planned release was suspended due to the government's approval freeze across most of 2018. And by May 2019, Tencent announced that it would no longer seek to publish PUBG Mobile in China, but instead would re-release the game under a new title, Game for Peace, that readily meets Chinese content restrictions, such as eliminating blood and gore. This version of the app was again renamed to Peacekeeper Elite in 2020. 
Following the Chinese version, a Taiwanese version of the game was released called PUBG Mobile TW. Also, a version meant for lower end mobile devices was released called PUBG Mobile Lite that featured a smaller map made for only 60 players. There was also a PUBG Lite version released for lower end PCs later in the same year. PUBG wasn't done yet. They would go on to release PUBG for Stadia and port the game to next gen for Xbox Series X and S and PS5. Over the years, PUBG has garnered many awards and received many nominations. PUBG was even nominated for Game of the Year a number of times, although they never won. PUBG Mobile did, however, win Esports Mobile Game of the Year last year. Like many other viral games, PUBG would have to endure the controversy and legal battles most other popular games have to experience, starting with the lawsuit they filed against Epic Games. Around the release of PUBG, Epic Games had released their version of a battle royale as an addition to their survival game Fortnite. Epic later released a standalone free-to-play version of the game in September of 2017. Shortly after its release, Bluehole expressed concerns about the game, acknowledging while they cannot claim ownership of the battle royale genre, they feared that since they had been working with Epic for technical support on the Unreal Engine, which PUBG is based on, that they may have had a heads up on planned features that they wanted to bring to Battlegrounds, and Fortnite could have it implemented first. PUBG Corporation would go on to file a lawsuit against Epic Games Korea in January of 2018, alleging that Fortnite Battle Royale was infringing on the copyright of Battlegrounds. However, the lawsuit was closed by PUBG Corporation in June of 2018 for undisclosed reasons. As for the controversy side of things, in March of 2019, Battlegrounds was banned in the Indian state of Guhara after the local government decided that the game was too addictive and an unnecessary distraction during exam season. A number of students were caught playing the game and were arrested as a result. The ban was not renewed in some cities in the state after March as exam season had ended. A similar ban was enacted in Nepal and Iraq in April of 2019 with the cited reasons being that the game was harmful to children and teenagers. The ban in Nepal was lifted shortly after by the country's Supreme Court, stating that the government could not enforce such a ban that interfered with personal freedoms without demonstrating a reason why the ban was necessary. In mid-2019, Jordan and the Indonesian province of Ece issued similar bans. Even facing adversity, PUBG continues to climb and build a community dedicated to the game. In March 2019, Brendan Green stepped down as creative director and moved to Amsterdam to form a studio called PUBG Special Projects. In December of the same year, Green announced a new project called Prologue under a new studio name, Player Unknown Productions. He described it as an exploration of new technologies and gameplay. In 2021, Green announced that he would be leaving Krafton, the parent company of Bluehole, but would continue Player Unknown Productions. He also stated that the studio would not be working on anything in the battle royale genre, but something more experimental. It seems that the studio is working to build massive sandbox worlds with brand new technology. The history of Player Unknown and the genre that he pioneered goes to show that with dedication and perseverance, anything can happen. One man built one of the largest gaming genres, starting with a mod of a mod. He took the popularity of the DayZ mod and built it into his own. We can only hope that stories like Green's will inspire the next generation of developers and allow them to create something truly unique and innovative. As of recording this, PUBG has sold over 75 million copies and is sitting at the fifth most sold game ever. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this and I really hope that you learned something new. If you're interested in learning more about the gaming industry, please feel free to subscribe and comment what game you want covered next. Again, thank you so much for watching this. There are some big things coming up in the future, and I will see you all in the next video.